Good morning. Welcome on this second Sunday of Easter. We have my favorite text today for our gospel reading, so I am excited about that. It was my ordination text, so very excited. Uh, good to see you here. Hope you all had a lovely Easter. Uh, just a couple announcements. Uh, Jeff let me know that if you uh, were intending to attend the men's chorus, tickets are sold out. So uh, next time we'll have to jump earlier, won't we, and get those tickets right away. Uh, there's a new member or member class. It's for current and potential future members uh, on starting this Tuesday night. Uh, at 7 o'clock, and it goes for the next four weeks. Uh, I hope that uh, you will all consider attending. Uh, there's some really great uh, short video clips that have been put out for free from the Luther House of Study, and so we're going to watch those and spend some time and discussion uh, looking at the small catechism, and if we have time, we'll maybe uh, explore some things such as uh, why am I a Lutheran? Uh, and some other uh, clips as well. So I'm looking forward to that. It should be a, a fun time together. Uh, in addition, this Wednesday, German Supper uh, is this Wednesday. Uh, plenty of opportunities to help out if you're a good potato peeler or even not so good like me. Monday night, we'll be looking for your, uh, your hands to join us and uh, many, many opportunities to fill in and help out or even uh, just fill up your belly. So uh, if you don't have your tickets yet, get them now. The council members have them available uh, for you to purchase. You save a little bit buying ahead of time. So uh, please get your tickets if you have not already done so. Uh, there's many other opportunities. I'll let you check them out. Uh, but I invite you to uh, please rise as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, uh, number 783, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. Graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through the proclamation of the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, I invite you to please be seated as we sing together uh, hymn number 767, All Things Bright and Beautiful, and I invite the children to come and join me up front. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to sleep at night thinking about how I left the assignment at school and how much trouble I was going to be in the next day because I didn't have my assignment. Uh, sometimes uh, when I was little, my grandpa got sick in his heart and we had to go to drive two hours to the hospital where he was at and I was worried about that. There's a lot of things that we worry about, don't we? If people that we love are feeling uh, bad and we want them to be well, or if we're feeling bad about something that we've done or haven't done. Well, when I was in seminary, uh, I was told a story about a woman who had a little girl, and every night before bed, this little girl and her mom would pray together, and her, the, the little girl would talk about all the people that she wanted to pray for, all the things that she wanted to pray for. Do you, have you guys ever prayed before bed? Yeah, we do this, don't we? We pray. And so her mom realized that this little girl was really, really worried. And she was confessing to her mom all of her worries. And so her mom put together this little ritual uh, because mom realized that, well, that moms get worries too, don't they? And even dads do. So this is something I think the dad in that family did as well, where before bed, they would say their bedtime prayers, and then they would do a little ritual uh, where both the child, the little girl, and mom or dad uh, and actually, the kids in the family, because there was another son that came along, they enjoyed this so much, and it gave them so much peace that they actually taught their babysitter how to do it, because the kids couldn't go to bed without it. So they taught their babysitter to do this as well. And so each, the parent and the child, would say, uh, I confess to God and to you that I have sinned today, and I pray to Almighty God to have mercy on me. And when we talk about sinning, if you're worried about a grandpa or a grandma that's sick, is that, have you done something wrong? 
No, we haven't really done anything wrong, right? We're just having some trouble trusting that everything's going to be okay. And so we confess, we say whatever it is that we're worried about or that's troubling us, and then the parent or the child says, these words are from Jesus, I forgive you. And when that word is said, whatever it is, that the child or the parent is worried about, it goes over to Jesus, and Jesus gives us his peace. Now, do you know what peace is? It's kind of hard to describe, isn't it? Uh, but it's when we feel at rest in our hearts, right? Our hearts are feeling peaceful, they're feeling calm and at rest. And so what this word does is give us this word of the peace of Jesus Christ. Even though, uh, do you think that this fixes a grandma or a grandpa feeling bad? No, it doesn't fix it, does it? It doesn't change what's happening, but it gives peace in knowing that whatever we're concerned about, Jesus is holding that in his hand. Uh, because our hands, well, we're not strong enough to hold up all of these concerns, are we? Can, can, can we fix grandma or grandpa? No, we can't do that. We can't fix people that we're worried about, but Jesus can take care of them. And so what I want to do today is give you guys each one of these and encourage you to try it at home with your mom and dad. I know that there's one family in the church, I've, I've given these out before, that does this quite often and they really <coughs> like it. So. Uh, I encourage you to try it out. I do this myself when I become concerned. My cat doesn't do it with me, so I have to find a friend, right, to help me. Sometimes your brother helps in chapel on Wednesday nights, helps me with this. Uh, but this is something that I do as well. So, uh, so just so that you know, uh, this word is for you now as well. Whatever it is that we're concerned or worried about, in the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Uh, and whatever your concerns are, they belong to Jesus. And he gives you his peace so that you can have a calm and restful heart and soul. Would you guys pray with me? Let's pray. Can you repeat after me in the congregation too? Uh, dear Jesus, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for, your forgiveness. Thank you for loving me. Please protect my family. And keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. Do you guys each want one of these? And you can grab a treat too. There's one.
We will read responsibly Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. All your lives have fallen for me. I have a I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Our second lesson is from 1 John, the first chapter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Here is the lesson. For fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them 
when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So it's Easter evening. After a terribly upsetting event has happened, right? Jesus has died. Uh, he has been raised from the dead. And he is out of the tomb. He's on the loose. He's looking for the disciples. A wondrous thing unless, well, unless you're feeling a little guilty, then it's kind of scary. Uh, and it says that they're locked up, locked away for fear of the Jews. Well, when we talk about this, there's a couple ways we can see this. They're afraid that since, well, Jesus was martyred, that they may also be persecuted and martyred, killed. <coughs> they may also be put to death. And as I said, Jesus is, well, he is the Jew of all Jews. Uh, and so likely they are also frightened because Mary has told them, Jesus is looking for you. He's coming to find you. And so they're hiding away and and, um, well, we know that feeling. I've talked about it before, and you know the feeling uh, when you've done something against someone who you love dearly, whom you respect, uh, who you want to have respect you, uh, a mentor, a teacher, someone who is very important. Imagine someone that you've been following around for three years in this relationship, and you have abandoned him, betrayed him, deserted him to save your own neck. <clears throat> well, uh, as we have talked about, there are three things that cause a separation uh, between us and God. There may be many more, uh, but I'm going to key in on these three things. Uh, guilt, shame, and worry. Now, guilt says I have done something wrong. I feel that I've done something wrong. It's saying I have a list of commandments, of rules, of virtues, of moral uh, guidelines that I uh, want to live up to and I know that I have not lived up to them. Uh, that I have failed. And I feel bad. And that guilt is the difference between the behavior I was supposed to uh, have and the behavior that I actually uh, exhibited. That is guilt. It's about behavior. And so as we've talked about time and time again, they had denied and deserted Jesus. They're afraid that when Jesus comes to them, that he is going to accuse them and condemn them 
because of their sin. They're frightened of this. Now, shame is a little bit different than guilt. Shame is not, I feel I've done something wrong, but shame is, I feel that I am wrong. That inherently within my person, there is something wrong. Shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we ourselves are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. That something that we've experienced, done, or failed to do makes us unworthy of a connection with other people. Here, Jesus. And so the disciples are feeling this sense of shame as well, uh, afraid that Jesus is going to cast them off, cut off the relationship completely, and tell them, I made a mistake about choosing you. We hear this in families, right? Uh, Madsons don't do that kind of thing, right? That's shame. This is who you are supposed to be, the kind of person you're supposed to be, and here you are, right? You don't measure up. You are failure. You are flawed at your core. And so, uh, well, many of us are terrified that if people really knew us, that is how they would see us, right? We're supposed to be this kind of a person, but really, if people knew what was going on behind closed doors uh, before we arrived at worship today or what we were doing last night, uh, if people really knew this, well, we would be cast out. Sometimes we can even... Uh, kid ourselves that maybe God doesn't know, right? We're hoping that if we stay kind of on the fringe of things, God won't see who we truly are. We can deceive ourselves in this way. And then, of course, there's worry, right? They are worried. <coughs> worry says, I'm anxious. I'm uncertain about actual or potential issues, problems, troubles that I see on the horizon. We all know what this is like, right? What's, something's happening, something's brewing, you can't sleep at night thinking about it, worrying about it, finances, relationships, work, friends, school, marriage, children. We can worry an awful lot about what's going to happen in the future, even if we don't know what's going to happen, right? Our minds are really good, with the help of the devil, to spin things into uh, a mountain out of a little molehill. This is what we do. And so here, the disciples are worried that they're next, that it's their necks that are on the chopping block, that they are going to face this same uh, persecution and martyrdom uh, that they who follow Jesus who's now gone who's not there to protect them who was declared an enemy of the faith the Jewish faith and declared an enemy of the state the Roman government that they too will receive this persecution and if any of you have watched Paul the Apostle you've seen that movie, you see how this persecution grows and grows and grows. So their concerns are not unfounded. So as they're locked away, cowering behind the doors, Jesus comes through the locked doors. Imagine if they weren't scared already, right? Here's Jesus who just appears before them, doesn't unlock the door, doesn't knock and say, hey, let me in. He just appears through the locked doors before them. If things weren't bad enough, now uh, here's the guy that you've betrayed and denied and abandoned, and he's right there, except his body does something that it could never do before. 
and you've got a word that you're anticipating hearing from him, but he says, peace be with you. There's no accusation there. There's no condemnation there. There's no finger pointing. The comeuppance that they're expecting does not happen. Instead, Jesus comes with this word, peace be with you, and this word actually does to the disciples what Jesus is saying. When Jesus speaks, it isn't just a word that is a symbol that describes something else. His word is an effective word. It brings peace. It removes fear and terror. It quiets their hearts that have been all a flutter, pounding out of their chests. He quiets their hearts and gives them rest for their souls. He gives them exactly what it is that they need most. This word, peace be with you, says to their guilt, I forgive you. Peace be with you says to their shame, I accept you just as you are. Peace be with you says to their worry, I'm right here with you, by your side until the end of the age. Now it's important to note that this peace doesn't remove the danger, right? It doesn't change the external circumstances of the Jews who are going to be persecuting them. It doesn't change that. It doesn't change that, uh, what they're fearing. It doesn't take that away. This is what it is to be a Christian, is that this word gives them the peace of God that passes all understanding. Now, oftentimes we pray for peace. Usually we pray for worldly peace. That's not what I'm talking about here. Worldly peace, when we pray for worldly peace, what we're praying for is that God will remove the external evils which cause the contention in the world, right? If we're at war, we've declared war, we're bombing, or our troops are moving, uh, or enemies are moving against us, peace be with you uh, isn't going to remove that worldly peace. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, in the same way, if you're struggling with poverty, peace be with you isn't going to give you money. That's not what it is intended for. Uh, if you're ill or a loved one is ill, Peace be with you isn't going to heal that person when you hear it. In worldly peace that we pray for, that misfortune is removed. And then we call that peace. This isn't what we're talking about. In that world, where your peace is dependent upon what's happening around you, dependent upon whether there's an enemy or there's a war or there's a disease, uh, that kind of peace that we're looking for, those threats are around, when they're removed, then you feel peace. It's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is with the peace of God through Christ Jesus, all of these evils still remain externally. They're not removed, but what happens is you're off the roller coaster, right? Your emotions don't depend on whether things are going good or bad or you're going up and down. With the peace that passes all understanding, your enemies, your illness, your poverty, sin, death, and the devil still remain. We still see them. We still experience them. Yet within, there is this eternal, internal peace. There's this internal strength, this comfort for the heart that sustains, 
that despite the fact that there are these evil things outside that seem to be attacking, in the face of it, this word gives courage. This word, even when things look really bad, you can still experience joy and a clear conscience. This peace that Christ gives is nothing other than giving a heart that is certain that you have a merciful and gracious God and that your sin is forgiven. This happens then when Christ shows his hands, his feet, and his sides. You see that and you know that that is your sin and your death conquered on the cross when Jesus was crucified for us and when he shed his blood and died for us. That's what it is, right? It's to be redeemed from our sin, to be reconciled with God by removing God's wrath. So that when you look at God, no matter what it is that's attacking from any side, you can say, God is pleased with me. This is not God attacking me. God has given me his peace, his word of promise. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter with whom I am well pleased. This comforts and soothes the troubled conscience. Now you and I are here gathered today behind closed doors. We have each come with our burdens that we carry, whether they be guilt or shame or worry. We've come here to receive a word from Christ. And so our Lord Jesus Christ says to you, right here, right now, peace be with you. To your guilt, he says, I forgive you. To your shame, Christ says, I accept you just as you are. To your worries, Christ says, I am right here, beside you, with you, always, till the end of the age. The result then from hearing this is what happened with the disciples. Just as the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, we too rejoice. <coughs> for through Christ now you have peace for your soul. You have the full favor, the full pleasure of God. You don't have to worry or wonder what God thinks of you. He says, you're mine. I'm pleased with you. No one can snatch you out of my hands. Whatever it is that's going on outside of you in this world, whatever it is that feels like it's closing in, Christ says, I'm with you. I'm taking care of it. I'm pleased with you. No one can snatch you out of my hand. And so we have his unending grace and mercy and comfort the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
I invite you to please rise as you are able and join me on page 49 as we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grants you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Uh, let us share Christ's peace with one another.
steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the Church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father of glory, remember your Church throughout the world and strengthen all your baptized people to be bold witnesses of our Lord's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruler of all, to your care and protection, we commend all our elected officials and all who serve in the armed forces, especially Tabor Gluth and Amanda Havemeyer. Grant them wisdom and honor as they carry out their responsibilities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly King, your Son promised that he does not break the bruised reed or quench the dimly burning wick. Remember in mercy all who struggle with the darkness of doubt and despair, and bring to their hearts the peace of your Son's resurrection victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgiver of all our sin, you have given your church the keys of the kingdom. Help all baptized believers to use them faithfully, that your people's joy may overflow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the earth, for our farmers, and for good weather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our healer, we commend to you all those who are in need of restoration, whether of body, soul, or spirit especially remembering before you Mike Rogotsky, the family of Marv Wendland, the family of Brenda Gluth, Merlin Peterson, Mary Sternberg, Arlen Kettner, and Pastor Daryl Peterson. Grant to them your peace that they may bear their sufferings with patience as they await your gracious healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting one, we receive our, thanks this, receive our thanks this day for all who have fallen asleep in faith in Christ Jesus. Bring us to share with them the joys of the feast that never ends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 699, Blessed Assurance. Amen.